Taking in the expressions on his friends' faces, he surveyed their uncertainty. Such a situation had never crossed their paths before. With a quickened pulse, he observed the enchanting Disney-esque fawn, oblivious to the hidden danger concealed within the depths of the nearby woods. Urgency coursed through him, yet little did he realize that this endearing, powerless creature could unwittingly thrust him into the clutches of peril. Despite having lived in a rural area for a long time, Steve Newt never thought he'd experience a wildlife encounter like this. The incident unfolded during a spirited road trip with his companions. Cruising along a road that ran alongside the forest, they engaged in lively conversation, thoroughly enjoying themselves. Then, in a split second, he forcefully jammed his foot down on the brake pedal. The car's occupants jolted forward, eyeing Steve with bewilderment and unease. They began scolding him, but he paid little attention. His focus was fixed on something ahead, squinting to discern it. Gradually, they too noticed a small brown lump in the middle of the road. The initial assumption was that the object was a creature injured in a collision, yet there were no signs of impact or tire imprints. Steve, determined to investigate, declared his intention and emerged from the vehicle, approaching the enigmatic creature. However, as he drew nearer, an unexpected wave of sorrow washed over him, contemplating the vulnerability of the being meeting harm from a car. She was lying in the middle of the road, her legs tucked in under her, she was completely alone. Autumn leaves the color of red, yellow, amber, and orange drifted around her. She looked like something out of a Disney movie. It was a baby deer, but something wasn't right. On closer inspection, the fawn's legs looked collapsed in a strained position underneath her body, like a twisted knot. Did she not have the strength to get up? It was as if she was terrified or paralyzed. But there were no visible signs of injury and she appeared to be trying to make herself look smaller. Steve didn't know what to do, so he signaled his friends over. Little did he know he was inviting them into danger. It circled the fawn, making sure to give her space, so as not to frighten her too much. They weren't sure if they should touch her or not. And then one of the men noticed something. Her eyes were open. The fawn was tiny. She must have been born just minutes before they arrived, which, judging by her size, was a real possibility. But if she was just born, then where was her mother? The men looked around the area searching for her mother, but they couldn't see anything. If she's alone, how would she survive? They worried, but she wasn't alone. They were about to become aware of that very soon. Steve had already decided that he couldn't just leave her there and go on their merry way. He wanted to make sure she was okay, but maybe he should have left when he had the chance. One of the men told Steve to leave the fawn alone, but Steve was adamant. At least he should try to protect the fawn on the road so that she'd be safe from other cars. Right? Steve had an idea. She was healthy, so she should get up soon, he said. I'll just go up there and park my truck sideways and wait until it gets up. But something else was waiting in the shadows, something that would give Steve the fright of his life. They wondered how long they'd have to guard the fawn against the dangers of the road when suddenly they heard a rustling sound behind them. Without warning, a sound pierced the silence, startling them all. The presence felt non-existent until that moment, as if the surroundings had been deserted. Hoping for the arrival of the mother, they turned their heads, only to be met with disappointment. Nothing came into view. Perplexed, Steve scanned the area, searching for the silhouette of a deer but what he discovered was far from the deer. Minutes passed, and once again the peculiar rustling reached their ears, but this time it carried a weight, drawing nearer. Could it be the mother, concealed yet protective of her young? Steve and his friends made a unanimous decision to remain utterly silent and minimize their presence, coaxing the mother to emerge with greater assurance to tend to her offspring. If she was watching them, surely this would help. But she wasn't watching them and making themselves look small in this situation was definitely not going to help. It wasn't a deer watching them. It was something else. The crucial moment happened when Steve noticed the fawn's eyes were still wide open, fixated on something in the woodland off the road just next to his friends. Once the fawn had stopped perceiving the men as a threat, she went back to focus on the real issue at hand. Steve knew something was happening behind the scenes here that he didn't quite understand, so he followed her gaze. 
Hunched over on the ground behind the bushes was a young mountain lion. He was stalking the fawn, waiting for the men to leave to make its move. Steve's heart raced as he realized how dangerous a situation this was for his friends standing uncomfortably close to the predator. He shouted, there's a mountain lion, stand up guys, make yourselves big and scary right now. The men jumped up simultaneously. The mountain lion knew its cover had been jeopardized. The sudden shouting and jumping of the men were enough to scare the mountain lion away. It abandoned its prey, and shortly after a new wrestling sound appeared, Steve and his friends were still in shock about how crazy that was. And now their hearts raced once more at the thought of the mountain lion coming back for round two. They braced themselves, but what came out from behind a tree now was none other than the fawn's mother. It was peering at them from behind the foliage as if thanking them for scaring away the danger. Relief fell across Steve's face. Now he and his friends were out of danger, and the fawn had a chance for survival. Eager to get out of there and give the fawn back to her mother and off the road, Steve slowly placed his hands under her hind legs and gently scooped her up. She didn't seem too spooked. Quickly standing up, he walked across the road to the woods at the side of her mother. The fawn suddenly started to move her little legs wiggled as Steve set her down gently and watched her leap away into the woods toward her anxious mother. Their eyes widened in wonder as they witnessed the fawn gracefully reuniting with its mother. Turning towards his friends, he raised his arms triumphantly, a euphoric expression illuminating his face. That was incredible, exclaimed one of the companions. The rest chimed in, expressing their joy over the successful endeavor. Inspired by the extraordinary moment, Steve made the decision to share the remarkable experience through an online post. Opinions on Steve and Paul's actions were diverse. Some individuals criticized their intervention, arguing that the fawn would likely have found its way back to its nearby mother if the men had simply retreated. However, the majority applauded Paul for his role in rescuing the baby deer. Steve's video capturing the incident amassed over 7 million views, but the question remains, are the negative reactions justified? It is natural for people to be concerned when they come across a solitary baby animal, fearing that it may be in distress. However, in most cases, it is advisable to leave them undisturbed. The Virginia Beach Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals affirms that female deer often leave their fawns alone during daylight hours but always return to them. It's crucial to understand that handling abandoned fawns can have serious consequences. If it becomes absolutely necessary to interact with a baby deer, the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife suggests rubbing an old towel in the grass and using it to wipe off the fawn removing any human scent. However, wildlife experts generally discourage touching baby deer altogether due to the risk of the mother rejecting them due to the lingering human scent. In Paul's situation, he didn't have the opportunity to clean the fawn before it darted away. Nevertheless, this doesn't necessarily mean he did something wrong. If the fawn is discovered in a hazardous location, it may be appropriate to pick it up and move it a few feet away from the danger. The Virginia Beach Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals endorses this action on their website, fully approving of Paul's actions on that day, and we wholeheartedly concur. Thanks for watching another heartwarming video. Please check out our channel for more stories that will make your heart melt.